compute very good. All right, so we will tune in for this Kundalini yoga class with a set for creativity, which really to me represents the genius of what a human being has. It's what the quality that connect us with the divine, you could say, because everything in life is a creative expansion. Energy in life is creative. Of course, we admire artists, but all of us are being creative every second, every moment. Life is about creative expansion. So consciously tapping in, consciously developing this skill is incredibly empowering, beautiful, and I've never known a person not to feel happy when they're tapped into their creativity. So we will tune in. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo is the mantra to open up a Kundalini practice. I call on the wisdom within. I call on you and all oh, divine wisdom of the cosmos, infinity, spirituality, enlightenment. I call on you. It's connecting the self with the infinite for protection, for uplifting. May all things in this set expand, enlighten get rid of what is not necessary and raise my consciousness. So let's start by rubbing our hands together and creating a lot of friction and heat. Bring the hands to the heart center. Take a deep breath in and close your eyes. Please join me. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. Inhale. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. Inhale. Om Namo. Inhale and hold your breath. Exhale, bring the hands to the knees with the palms up. Just sit and be aware of your energy, your presence, whatever state you're in right now, and then slowly open your eyes. All right, so our first one is on the back. And which leg do we hold on to first is raise the left leg. So on your left, lying on your back. Oh, one minute. The left leg is up and you will be holding your big toe. If you can't hold your big toe or your toes, this is where you get a strap. You want to keep the leg straight. Just stay right there. I am adjusting my lighting, my professional, wonderful lighting. It should help get me lit. Yes, so here we are on our backs. Left leg is up and the right leg beats your bum. So start kicking. We're doing this for 90 seconds. We're stimulating the sexual meridian or the lifeline of the body that which is also considered, I'm not quite sure if I'm giving full exact accurate information, the sciatic nerve is considered the lifeline in the um, Kundalini practices. So you can do this really, really fast. I'm gonna adjust my hands because it seems better here, but you wanna keep it, <laughs> giving your, bu your bum some spanking <laughs> and notice that it's really loosening up the hamstring and the knee just keep keep on going activating all of that energy this is your sexual energy this is the ability to reproduce and create something new out of who you are and open up to all of it the most powerful force in the universe creative energy because it's what keeps the universe going, replicating itself, altering itself, changing itself. We have about 20 seconds to go and then we will be shifting to the other side. 
So just nicely keep on going, find the rhythm of your own breath. Almost there. And shift. Other side and keep on going with the other side. So now we're holding and beating the other, the left leg. Right leg needs to be as straight as can be. So if you are flexible, I'm pretty flexible and I start out at my toes, but at some point it didn't feel really just right for me. So I back down a bit. If you're holding a strap, of course, you have the privilege of adjusting the angle at the way that your body's ready to do it. Just keep on going. Keep this knee just flopping and kicking your buttocks, your buttock, I should say. Nicely moving on, we're halfway there. I think this is gonna stimulate everybody's legs a lot because we are actually really working the muscles of the legs even though we're lying on our backs. Almost there, another 10 seconds to go. And then bring both feet to the floor with the knees bent. The arms are by your sides and just rest, eyes closed. Check into your own energy. Just feel what happens. Notice a shift or the change in sensation that's now coming through your legs. Allow that energy to flow. And then slowly open your eyes. And our next one is the plow. And what we'll be doing, not the plow, I'm sorry, shoulder stand. And we'll be lowering one leg at a time towards the floor. So just to demonstrate, to begin with, if you're going up on your shoulders, you're hiking the hips up and then you'll take one leg down and then the other leg down. Now. If that's too much for you, let's have you get your feet. If you want to, you can be on a wall with your feet and you can push your bottom up or you can get your feet on a chair and literally just do this. So if your feet are on the chair and you're just bringing the leg over, that is fine. So it's almost a variation of what we just did. So here we are, you're going to Get into the shoulder stand or have your legs either against the wall and pushing your bottom up and then lowering the leg one at a time or on a chair. And lowering one leg at a time towards the floor. Once you've gotten yourself going, close your eyes. So like all yoga, all Kundalini practices, we do it with the eyes closed so we can really tap in to the, our own experience. And this scissoring movement, again, is stimulating the whole lower area of our pelvis, actually, the tailbone, the sacrum, the first and second chakras. It's kind of opening up the energy in there and moving it, so it's very powerful. You get a little stagnant down there due to lack of use, I should say, within the physiology of the body in the modern world. So keep on going, keep this area moving, start to feel if anything is loosening up or adjusting or shifting or challenging. It's all part of the growth and the learning process. So we have another 
10 seconds or so to go. We're doing this for 90 seconds. And then slowly lower your bottom back down to the floor. If your feet are on a chair, just stay there and put your hands out. If not, extend your legs out to a full Shavasana. And just observe your energy, observe your body, let everything unwind and release from this. And then slowly bring yourselves back, roll to one side and push yourselves up. And now sitting with your legs apart. So whether you're one of those people that the legs just fly or one of those people that barely move, it doesn't matter. You just wanna be sitting. If you're extremely tight, get a pillow under your bottom because that will help lighten up the load into the hamstrings a little bit so you can be more vertical. From here, we are going to go, whoa. How did this happen? Stop, stop. Ooh. Excuse me, my, my clock, oh, here we go. My clock jumped to a different algorithm and I didn't want that. So here we are, we're going to start and we inhale and we go to the left leg. Left leg and stretch out. Some people get all the way down. Inhale to come back up. Exhale going towards the right leg. Maybe you get your head to your knee. Come back up. And exhale going straight forward between both legs. And come back up. Some people hold their big toes the whole time. No way me today, but that's kind of the flexible people. So here we go. You're going to take your time. Left leg, inhaling up. Right leg, inhaling up. Center, inhaling up. Close your eyes. Once you're comfortable, do it at your own rhythm. Some of us are very stiff. Some of us are very loose. You want to just use this to keep making your own body start to move and open up the tight spots. So as you can tell, there's a lot of focus on the pelvis and on the legs, the connection of the legs into the pelvis, the tailbone, the sacrum, basically the foundation of the body, which is so key for us being grounded and functional in the world. And um, incredible place for energy, but also a huge amount of tightness and, and atrophy and can kick into this area. So we want to keep moving it. We want to keep checking in, getting familiar and exploring what else, what else is part of my destiny, is part of my potential, I should say, to bring creative growth. That probably the brilliance of us being a human being and having consciousness to be aware and to choose and not just be instinctual about everything. So keep on going. We have half a minute to go and we will have been doing this for three minutes. Another 10 seconds to go.
Finish in the middle and then slowly bring your legs together. Bounce them up and down to release any accumulated tension and then cross your legs in if that's comfortable for you or keep them straight and turn your palms up and go into silence. Slowly open your eyes. All right, now the next one is the plow. I'm just trying to think the sequencing for the, those of you that are stiffer. Um, if you're using a chair, this is what my thought was. This is my chair here. So my thought was either you can press up and lower down, that's one option, or you can roll and back down. If you want the full plow back and forth, it's going to be with your legs straight and then you take your legs all the way over your head towards the floor and you roll back and forth. So again, this is something we're going to do for two minutes. So starting out, I'm lifting my legs and taking them over. And then rolling back and bringing the legs to the floor. So work in your own speed. Work in your own body. Once you're comfortable, close your eyes and keep on going back and forth now we're starting to open up the whole spinal energy we loosen up quite a bit into the hips and into the legs and into the pelvis and now we're kind of expanding the opening of this energy further into the full body so just take your time feel the effects Work with, meet yourself exactly where you are. That's the secret of life. Don't be in conflict, be in truth. The truth will set you free. You're worth it. <laughs> the integrating every experience that's coming to use it to evolve yourself can be, it's power, it's indescribable power because then it doesn't matter so much what life is bringing at you, it matters how you greet it and how you use it and what sort of meaning you give to it. Because you can take the worst deck of cards and you can really make gold out of it if you are able to. So back and forth, we have about 10 seconds to go. And finish the movement, go into your Shavasana and rest. And then slowly bend your knees, roll to one side, press yourself up. And our next one is again for the spine. 
We will do this one. Lopez pose. Supposed to be for three minutes. We're doing it for 90 seconds. So there will be two variations. Actually, we will rest in between. So we're just beginning with the first one. You want to make fists with both hands, and they are this way, right in the groin area or a tiny bit down. So they give you a little anchor. You're actually on either side of your pubic bone. So what will happen? You want your hands in that little crease. So you start with your bottom up and then your chin is forward, your legs, your legs are together and you will lift up the legs off the ground. So see if you can do this. If it's really too much to get the legs up, just trying makes the muscles work and starts to bring a huge amount of light back into an area that's pretty sluggish for many people. If, it's, if you would rather, you can lift one leg at a time. Get those legs up or do the best you can making the body be challenged in that direction and just hold the position if you're able to. 90 seconds is a long time. If it's too much, you can rest. Keep. We're now really waking up the tailbone, the sacrum, the glutes, the very high part of the hamstrings, the whole part of the body that atrophies for many, many people. It is such a source of power. Keep on going. Keep those legs working. Only five seconds to go. And relax. Turn your head to one side. Palm back of the hands down. Feet turned in. So your big toes are pointing towards each other. So this is an internal Shavasana. Relax. And then bring your hands under your shoulders just for a minute, sit back into child's pose. We're going back down on our stomach, but I wanted to have a little discussion first. So, um, and come on up. The next one is um, also on our stomach. Now we lift the chest up. So a few pointers I really want to encourage you to search. Um, Arlene, I know your upper back is stiff and your lower back is very malleable. So for you especially, I would like you to explore how to get the bones at the high part of the ribcage to start to lift. For a lot of us, it's a real, real big challenge and well worth working towards. Um, sometimes, and I, this is general because I'm not sure with all of you, we tuck our tail a lot and that can block the arcing of the back. Um, I would encourage all of us, we're gonna go and do a little practice, by the way, to check that you're allowing the lower back to sink versus be pushed up. Because sometimes when we lift, if the back is tight there, it will lift instead of the bone sinking down. So let's go through a few pointers about this position. So we will be doing it like this, but beforehand, I'd like you to bring your hands forward so you can explore. The big toes are touching and don't tuck your pelvis under unless you have a super archy back and this will give you stability. But notice I'm not, I'm not internally dropping this way. If anything, you want to have a slight lift here for Ruthie especially. 
you need this a little bit. This opens up your hip flexors. You want the, the front of the quads very long. Now, in this position, can you pull the shoulders up slightly up and see when you lift, can you get that neck connection and right up there, right that high part of the back to work because this will be the position you're in and your tongue is out. And rest a minute, let me double check before we actually go into the position. Um, round, stick your tongue out all the way out and breathe rapidly through the mouth. So we're doing 90 seconds, not the three minutes I say. So as much as you can get that upper back to work, doesn't matter if you're barely off the ground, you want to get the upper back stimulated versus notice now what can come up quite high, but most of the bend is being taken in the lower back, but I want to challenge the upper back. So let's get down. The chin is on the mat to start. Let's all of us start together. Work your way up into this position that you feel the upper back working. You can let the shoulders relax once you've made the upper back fire. Stick your tongue out and start panting like a dog. Close your eyes once you've figured it all out and just keep on going. Keep on going for some of you that have done the class with the pressing the diaphragm down. This may give you leverage to go higher, but don't sacrifice the upper back work for that. Keep on going. We're almost at a minute now, so we're through the hard part. Really push the tongue out. It stimulates the throat enormously. Keep that jaw open. Lift up a little bit more and then relax. Go into silence. Allow everything to dissipate. Now open your eyes and come back up. And our next one, we're going into, they call it the cobra pose, it is mod modified, but I have to laugh because I wouldn't call this modified. What we'll be doing is, oh, I see why they call it, oh no, they're not, bend your knees. So right here, this movement allows the hip flexors to open even more. So you want that front of the body, Notice that the pelvis may change shape a little bit. Let it. Don't, I'd say over and over, do not tuck. Let the curves of the spine work for you. And see if you can get in touch with the lower muscles right around the sacrum and the high glute area. From here, you will lift up. Now, some people can go to straight arm. Um, get the upper back to be part of the formula. If you've got a very loose lower back, you can go way up, but the upper back isn't working with you. I'd rather recommend you do the upper back. So I'm just going to stay on my elbows. We're doing the same thing, tongue out and panting. And some people get their head to their feet. In another lifetime for me, but here we go. Open the mouth and pant. As you do this, explore the bringing the feet closer in. And if you want to lift up higher, you can play around with it. 
distribute the stretch and the contraction intelligently throughout the whole spinal column. Don't rush into one area only. Then it's highly, highly beneficial, very stimulating, very healing, very, it, it rebalances the whole spinal column and, and activate it the right way but it has to be done with understanding that it's a full spine we're going for fifteen seconds to go Push your tongue up as far as you can. Take a deep breath in, close your mouth. And on the exhalation, head to one side, hands down, relax. either go into child's pose or stay on your stomach because we're going into boat pose next so let's do a little test run can you grab your feet because if you can great if you cannot you need to get the straps around so you can get something as close to this position as possible. So I've got a strap around my ankles. Once you're in this position, you'll be lifting up your thighs and your head and then turning. I'm going, I just have to double check which side goes first. Both pose, grab the feet, bring the left ear to the left shoulder and hold. We're going to hold for 30 seconds and then the right ear to the right shoulder. This is a lot. Um, but it's a good exercise for people who may have hypoglycemia. Go figure, don't know why, but that's what it says in two manuals that has the same set. So let's start, let's get into position. Lift the thighs and the head up as far as you can off the ground. Some people fly very high up and then get your left ear towards your left shoulder and hold that position. Boy, amazing stretch in the neck. And then shift sides. Almost there. Come back to the middle and lift a little bit higher up if you can. Pull and relax. Again, go into silence. Let everything unwind. Open your eyes and come back up and coming back into a bow pose now. Some of you know this from Pilates, we do rocking. We rock forward and we rock back. It's too much, you just do what you can or you admire the thought of doing it. Um, 
in a perfect bow, you rock all the way up to the chest and all the way down to the thighs. Just to have a vision, not for me today, but let's all do this. We're going to do this for one minute. So let's get back up into our bow, lifting the thighs up and then attempting to rock back and forth. Let the body readjust because you'll feel things in the spinal column and in the shoulders really shift around. Once you kind of feel good about this, just close the eye and see if you can keep on going. These are the times that you'll know why they say, don't do yoga on a full stomach. I don't have a full stomach, but I can respect it. Not fun to do if you just ate a big meal. Not possible, really. Almost there, 10 seconds to go. And relax. Slowly push yourself back into a child's pose. Take your time because the spine has had a lot of work. Let yourself release into it. Just do whatever you need to do to release all of this tension, all of this, um, you know, work into the back, into the hips. Take a few breaths. And then bring yourself up to sitting. And now we're changing into a whole other um, work, which is the squatting part that I had mentioned earlier. So what we will be doing is bringing ourselves into a squatted position. I'm going to use something under my heels because I think it will be an easier gradient for me. I'm gonna turn on a diagonal so you can see. So I have my heels lifted. You can also roll up your yoga mat to, do, to get the same result. The arms will be straight in front of you. I'm gonna lift the camera a little bit. Mm -hmm. And from here, you'll come down into a squat if you can and come back up. So we're going down and up and we're gonna do that for, it's just started. We're doing this for two minutes. So take your time. It's fine to just go like this. Or you can put your chair behind you and sit into the chair and then come back up again. So whatever you feel is the right level, as much as you can keep your back straight. That's really, what you want, you don't want to be rounding. So we want to get this hinging of the hips, the hip sockets, really part of it in the low, as you go down and up. So for many of us, we can't get all the way down at the beginning because those joints again have been tight or stiff or they've had injuries or um, basically misuse. So just back and forth. Lowering down, taking your time, making those legs push you up because the legs are designed to actually bear a lot of weight. They tend to get very weak in the modern world. So make them work. They will love you for it.
If you can do it with your eyes closed, even more ah, challenging and exciting to do. We've got 20 seconds to go. Ay, 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 ay. Good. 10 seconds. And finish your last one. And if you've got your heels elevated, step down and just stand. Feel your body, feel the silence, feel the spirals of maybe your balance spinning around. Allow the breath to settle. And slowly open your eyes. And our next one is crow pose, which again, we will do for 90 seconds. So this one, your heels are together and the toes are slightly out. You want to bend down, your heels are up. So you're down here. And then you keep the heels up and you straighten. Now some, some people bring Oh no, the heels are up in this set. So you're basically going down and up. So it's like a frog. Here it's called crow pose. It's frog because it's usually called frog, like a jumping frog. Down, and I have the name wrong. So inhaling when you're looking up and exhaling when you're looking down. So back and forth, I've already started the clock. So we're doing this for 90 seconds. You can't get all the way down. Of course, it's fine. You meet yourself at your place of truth. If you can't get to the floor with your hands, or you can't get to fully straight legs, I would recommend staying with the hands on the floor and just working the range of movement that your legs are ready to give you. If it's too hard to have the heels up, you can have the heels on that little ledge that we, were, we used a minute ago. So you get a little bit more of a foundation. If you can be on the toes, it strengthens that part of the foot. So the good news is, by the time this set is done, every part of the body will have been stimulated, activated, and your creative energy should be flowing very strong because the blocks will have been removed. Keep working through this. We have three seconds to go. So when you're finished with your legs straight, open the legs apart, hold the elbows and dangle down. And just let yourself hang here. And then let the arms hang. Roll yourself up to a standing position and stand again. Stand in this sh slight shifted energy. And let everything go. And slowly open your eyes. From here, if you can, bend over. I'm bending my knees just a little bit. Ideally, you want to feel your hamstrings working. And also, make sure you're supporting your lower back with your hands because you will be hanging long. Your head is straight, but you want to not be rounded. You want to hold the trunk so it's parallel to the floor and just hold this position for one minute. So we're here. Wait, so now we're really activating the support of the trunk in a straight position. If this is too much, put your hands on a chair. So you could be in this position. 
The reason I am bending my own knees a little bit is I want to be sure I'm activating my hamstrings and my glutes to hold the back. So it's not as much the back muscles as it is the leg muscle holding me. And if I straighten my legs, I will fall into the joints more and not work the right the muscles that need to be part of the foundation for this. Eventually, the legs should be straight. I just have a bunch of bad habits myself. So we have another 15 seconds to go. And we are at time. Stand up, keep your eyes closed. Allow the blood to rush to its new locations. <coughs> and slowly open your eyes. And now back down on the floor. <laughs> We've been through the toughest part of the set, the one that's the most kind of needing grit, you could say. If you can't sit this way, <coughs> excuse me, you can put a pillow. So find a way, and you can also roll the pillow up under your ankles if you, you're, it's too much of a stretch on your feet. So for those of you that, if, if um, this is too hard, you see how if I have the ankle less stretched, if you put something right here in this little triangle, it will make your, give you the ability to sit. So from here, we are in, this is called rock pose. And back to my timer. You want the hands this way, the thumbs are at the back and the fingers are at the front, and as best you can, you have your back lifted. And from here, inhaling to the left, exhaling to the right. So we're spiraling around the body, and you can go fast if you like, or slow. Once you have the feeling, you want to close your eyes. Make sure the breath works. So I'm hoping you can hear me. It becomes a form of a pop. So use your breath and this really make sure your spine is straight. So you're spiraling around the spine. You're really um, creating a lot of movement in the lymph and in the small tissues of the whole back and in the waist. I mean, literally it goes all the way up and down the spinal column. The whole trunk is work, but you want the flow as well. You want this breath because it's going to start to clear and clean out more subtle energetics that have accumulated from the work we've done up to this point, which is more gross, you, know, you could say more dense and more just um, massy, more uh, physical in nature. So now we're clearing this out and we're stimulating everything. Finish, inhale deeply, lift in the center. Now apply root lock. So squeeze the perineum or the pelvic floor, lift it up, feel and imagine this energy that you're squeezing pushed up through the spinal column all the way up to the top of the head, inside the brain, stimulating the glandular system of the brain. Release the lock, release the breath, release the hands to the knees with the palms up and just sit. Slowly open your eyes. And our next one, still in this position, I'm actually going to put my ankles over now because that's starting to hurt my feet a bit. 
So I'm doing exactly what I had said before. Now, next one, do we twist or do we stay? Ah, oh, this is cool. So the thumbs go under the armpits and the fingers are touching each other in the front if you can. And for me, this is an, an 80 minute. We lift the elbows and bring them down. So it's like wings going up and down. And if you can keep your third finger touching, rather hard to do, I keep disconnecting there, great. But you just do your best. Really amazing because it's gonna loosen up the shoulder, the very top of the shoulder, the deltoid muscle, and the whole upper part of the arm. It's quite amazing, really. And the fingers in the armpit stimulate all that lymph. Um, lots and lots of nerve endings under there, an area that gets very, very tight. Those of you who do the Yamana body rolling may know just how incredible the armpit gets when it gets congested. So we're stimulating this area and just bringing a lot of awareness and looseness and mobility into it with this movement that we're doing now. Connecting in with our genetic karma and memories of being a bird. As human beings, we've evolved and we have so many layers of evolution deep, deep, deep in our cellular knowledge and in our physiology. So it is amazing how yoga taps into a lot of it and you can almost find that knowingness of what it's like to be that sort of a creature. I often feel that that's why a lot of the poses are named after animals, local, locust pose, uh, um, and so forth, because it's actually tapping into the geometry of that animalistic quality. And we have it, we have evolved species, we have all of that. Inhale, lift the chest, spread the elbows, hold the breath, apply root block. Exhale the hands down. Be in your own space in silence. Open your eyes. And our next one, we clasp the hands behind the back. You're going to get bend over and lift the hands high up. If you have tight shoulders, please use a strap. The goal is you can also use a block for your forehead if you don't get to the floor. So I'm going to turn sideways so I can demonstrate what I'm using as props. But the pose is the arms up. If you can't get your arms up, you use a strap and you make it as wide as you need to so the arms get there because it's going to open some magical things in your body. So we are holding this. I hope you're already in the position. We're doing it for one minute. So nicely opening up. This is a huge release into the shoulder cuff and shoulder area. The, all the different routines that we've been working on now to get a whole other level of opening happening in the body. Quite spectacular. Once you've settled in, see if you can add slow, deep breathing to your experience. Wrap. I also actually keep on going, just adjusting it a little bit for my own needs.
And then slowly bring yourselves up, palms up on the knees, go into your side. Slowly open your eyes. And our next one is still in rock pose. If this is really hard on you, you can sit cross-legged or you can sit in a chair. There's no, you know, do make it work for you so you can focus on what we're supposed to be doing. And we have, I believe it's the left hand, bring the right hand on top of the left hand. Palms are down in front of the chest. And again, we will do this one for 90 seconds. So right hand, that's my right, my left in front of the chest, kind of between the nipple line, you could say, and you push down and up. So my right hand's pressing down, my left hand's pushing up. So it's putting a lot of pressure in the arms and that stimulates the heart. So you want to activate this. Again, if we're, we're doing 90 seconds, we're almost, we're 25 seconds now. Close your eyes and keep focusing on the tension. I can almost see the spiral of energy that will erupt when I let go because of this upward force on the left side of my body and the downward force of the right side in my arm. So it will become a wheel of energy if I let go. And of course, I get images of the spiraling of the cosmos and how planets circle around each other and spiral and expand outwards. So we're stimulating all these geometric and um, expansive forces that are part of nature within ourselves. They exist within ourselves. Spirals are very powerful everywhere. If you think of a flower unfolding, it's a form of a spiral, or a seashell, it's a form of a spiral. They're, they are a universal pattern that evolves in nature. So keep that pressure going. Notice how it builds up a certain tension inside you. We have another 20 seconds to go. can keep the breath calm. Five seconds to go. Just keep pressing and then my hands down. Notice the changes. And then slowly open your eyes. And this one, so still in rock pose again, sit in a chair, sit cross-legged if this is too much for you. And I just wanna see which one, fingers spread, stretch the arms out in front of you, make press with the hands and pull towards the heart center with great tension. As though you're pulling 200 pounds of weight, alternating. So. Hands in front, fingers, my fingers are spread out, stretch, so lots of energy in the hand. I'm starting with my left foot hand, making a fist, pulling it in, and then in. So you're back and forth, pulling, 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 pulling. A minute and a half, we'll be doing this. We're already at 20 seconds. So imagine that 20 pounds of weight that you are dragging towards you. Pulling, pulling, pulling. Close your eyes once you've got it. Really get into this movement. Make sure you remember to open and close the palms of the hands. So lots of energy firing into that hand between a fist and a spread position. You're energizing the whole extremities of the arm at this point. 
really work it. We have half a minute to go. Keep bringing it in and grabbing that next part to pull into your heart center. Interesting that the last one was about stimulating the heart center, building pressure into it. And now we're pulling all of this energy into our heart, into our heart. Imagine bringing it back into your middle. And then bring the hands down, feel the heart open. And open your eyes. Very good. Now we shift into a cross-legged position. Yay. So off. Oh, I'm ready for this one. So sitting cross-legged or easy pose or any position where the knees are dropped out that, oh, that you are comfortable. This is a fun one. So we're going to have our hands to the side. I'm going to start the set. Clap the hands together, open them out. They're gonna to come together behind your head. So you clap behind, and then you clap, my palms are together behind my lower back. So lots of things going on. And so four items, clap, open, clap, clap. Clap, open, clap, 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 open, clap, clap. So keep going in your own rhythm. Make sure you get as best of a clap as you can. Again, whoa, I forgot where I'm going. This one definitely makes you have to concentrate and think and not lose it. As best you can, keep clapping. It energizes and sends a whole vibration through your whole body. It's very, very good for you. This is not deep meditation. This is open all the channels that exist. We have 20 seconds to go. Finish the last set that you've got and palms on the knees. Whew. Slowly open your eyes and that was a brain teaser for me. So if you can do Lotus, bring your legs into Lotus. I'm not doing Lotus today. I can, but I need to warm my hips up for it. So I'm going to stay very comfortably cross-legged. What you will do is what's called broadie drops. And some people move and do them as fists. Um, I'm keeping my hands, I'm actually got finger, my fingers or the palms, but you lift your bottom up and you drop it down. Now, ideally there is a point between really where the perineum is, so between your sit bones and your pubic bone is where you want, you want to land on the soft tissue there. But the body needs to be really ready. The hips have to be in a certain condition and the pelvis and the legs to be able to have that angle when you drop down. So if you're not there, I'm still dropping a bit more on my, um, if my legs are wider. If I have my legs wider, now I can get into that spot. So do what you can. Put a pillow under you because if you've got a bony bomb and you're landing on your sit bones, you bruise the bones and that's not the purpose. 
The purpose is that we are stimulating the whole base of the chakra and the energy field of the body to really open up a big energy channel, channel moving up. So all the body drops in yoga are intended to open that channel up and stimulate it on the physical plane. So we are going to do 25 of those together. And if, you know, all you can do is think of lifting a little bit, that's fine too. It's a start. If it's too much, you just take a break. If it's too much for your shoulders and your arms. So let's here have a go. Lift and drop. That's one, two, three. I have to lean forward. Otherwise, I don't land in the right place. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty, one, two, three, four, and five, and rest. Slowly open your eyes and sitting on your, oh, on your right heel. So here we are, we have our two sit bones, we have this bum, bottom muscle. Can you place the heel between the sit bones? Now, if you've never done this before, this can be very painful. If your knees are not open enough, just pile the pillow underneath. You don't need to get down into there. Sometimes this can be painful both for the perineum and or the foot. So in my case, it's hurting into the bony part of my foot because I need to open up and balance more things there. All these poses eventually don't hurt you if, ah, I'm cramping. So get yourself into the position or release any cramps that have stirred up. Oh, there we go. Okay. So from here, if you can, lift this leg up. So we're going to do only 30 seconds of the leg lift because it's so hard. So you're going to lift one leg up. So now we're activating this whole shaft. If you can't, you hold it. If you can't lift it, you think of lifting it because it's asking the hip flexors and the body. If you can be very good, you're going to have your body very straight and lifted. And I'm literally lifting and lowering this leg. It's just too much for me to hold it there for 30 seconds. We have five seconds to go. Wow. Okay, other side. So change sides, sitting into the heel. The heel is between the sit bones. Take your time, figure out how to make it work in your body. All of this will loosen up the body as you're ready for it. I'm going to stop and start. And here we go. Another 30 seconds of lifting. This leg is stronger so I can hold it a little bit. But it's still, it really makes a quad. And the hip flexor work. And of course, sitting into the heel is a big number. Whoa! And again. So we're doing uh, only 30 seconds. Boy, is it also working my low abs. I mean, whatever is ready to work is being worked. We're almost at the end, by the way. <laughs> we're not quite there. Almost. Okay, we're coming off. And now we have both legs. So some of you know this is a teaser. Or if you can have your legs in the air, that means we are also going to do this for 30 seconds. See if you can lift your legs up. If you can have them straight, great. If you can't have them straight, it's okay. You can have them here. Another 15 seconds. And bring yourself into a cross-legged position. And this is our last one. Our last one, you did it. We are going to 
do Sufi grinds, which means you're sitting cross-legged in whatever position is good for you, and we will start counterclockwise. So counterclockwise, circling yourself around. And we are going to do 45 seconds in one direction and then 45 seconds in the opposite direction. This is just the final, final thing that you do. You can use your hands to help you do the movement or not. See if you can get the whole trunk all the way from the hips and the tailbone. Can, how much can you become aware of what's happening inside the whole pelvic area? There's so much that goes on in there. And most of us are basically, we never kind of opened it up. Very powerful source of energy. Strong, powerful athletes. They may not have studied exactly, but they are very, very active there. Um, beautiful models I have that going for them. We're reverse. For me, when I was younger, I remember my mom used to sometimes do energy work on me. And uh, people used to say, I've had a different healers say, you have no energy, you're, you're not grounded. You have no energy in your lower body. You're not connected up. And now I really understand what they were talking about because I was not. I was so um, blocked and stuck. And I also had a lot of misconceptions about what, how my body worked. And there was no um, intelligence in the area. Consequently, <laughs> I created a lot of injuries for myself. So now you'll come back to the middle, palms up, sit in your own energy field. And then lie down on your back for much dessert Shavasana. So just lie down, relax. And let your limbs go. So as you settle into your Shavasana, I will play Long Time Sun because we will not be singing it, we will be listening to it. And I would like you to fully allow the blessing of this song to permeate your soul and permeate your space. Such a beautiful song written anonymously, nobody knows who it was, so they say found on a little scrap of paper on the floor, the words of this song that no one knew who, who wrote it. And it's become a world famous song.
And now start wiggling your fingers and your toes. Come back to this level of consciousness. And in your own time, bend your knees, roll to your right side. And slowly bring yourselves back up to a seated position, the way we were at the beginning of this yoga practice. Welcome your space and your beingness. And to finish, let's bring our hands into prayer pose at the heart center and give thanks for the wisdom and teachings of yoga. Give thanks for our bodies, our minds, and the wisdom of everything that is coming into our life, knowing that we can always tap into our unique truth and guidance when we look inwards and we listen to our own hearts. And let's ask to be open to the blessings, the creativity, the joy of everything that life is offering for us, and that we reflect it back tenfold to the world around us. Take a big breath in. Bring your hands up to your forehead or third eye, down to your lips for a kiss, and bring your hands back down to your heart, and bow your head to your heart. May the mind always be the servant of the heart. And then lift your head and open your eyes, and satnam everybody, blessings of the day.